The Bread and Butter podcast acknowledges the Yagara people and the Turbal people as the traditional custodians of Mainjin, the lands on which we record today. We pay our respects to the Yagara and Turbal elders, past, present, and emerging. This podcast is brought to you by yeah. Productions. Did I say good? Just sort of get you into it one more time. Maybe just in case. Okay. Bread and Better Podcast. <laughs> okay. Bread and Better Podcast. I feel like I am. <clears throat> Bread and Better Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. We are Bread and Better and Alex and myself, Tegan, are here for all chats concerning women's health. Today, we're going to be diving into healthy habit creation and why the secret to success on your health journey is in your daily habits. If you don't know already, I am Tegan. I'm a personal trainer and sports nutritionist with over eight years of industry experience. I worked in a group fitness gym for many years, connecting with thousands of clients face to face before starting my own online business and getting deeper into clients' trends transformations on a more personalized level. I work with clients on their nutrition, fitness, and mindset, but the thing that really ties us all together and makes it stick is their daily habits and routine. In today's episode, we will explore this further, and I'll give you some ways that you can look at how what you do on a daily basis impacts your bigger goals. And I'm the other host of the show and the producer, Alex. My background is not in fitness. It is in freelance writing and now podcast producing. However, since I've been working with Tegan, I've already picked up a few bits and pieces from her that have really helped me on my health and fitness journey. I'm so excited to learn more from her today and I have snuck a few questions into the script that I would like to pick her brains on. Before we get into today's episode, we would like to again thank everyone who listens to the podcast and leaves us reviews and star ratings. If this episode lands for you, please be sure to send it on to someone else who is working on their health and fitness too. Hey Our Productions has also just released a new podcast called The Periodical Pod. Over there, we are also discussing women's health issues with a big focus on periods. Be sure to check it out. Uh, So kicking off the pod, as we always do, we're talking about the best thing that we ate in the past week we were just both saying that we haven't prepared anything today. So we're on the fly. (laughs) I was saying that I had Francie's pizza in the last week and noodle in the last week as well, which I've already mentioned on previous episodes. So I'm going to go for a third thing. (laughs) I went for a run at Cooley on the weekend on Saturday and I had an acai bowl (gasps) and they had an option to add Nutella. Yum. I saw your acai bowl and it looked so yummy. Yeah. I actually had two acai bowls on the weekend. Yeah. Nice. Um, but that one had Nutella and coconut yogurt and it was very, very good. And now I want to add Nutella to every acai bowl. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Maybe I'll make that on the weekend. I used to make the kids every day when I had one kid every day for lunch. (laughs) I made the kid every day. (laughs) Before I had three of them and it got too hard. I used to make Oscar like acai bowls for lunch, like spoiled child. And I would blend like avocado and frozen berries and banana. And I would put like muesli and coconut yogurt and acai, like everything in it. And that's literally what he had like almost every day before he went to kindy. And I don't think I've ever made one for Seoul, but I'll get there. Um, oh, I love them. They're so good. <laughs> They're so delicious. I haven't had one in ages. The best thing I ate, I've just remembered, Kevin and I had Thai antique on the weekend. Thai antique? Yeah. Have you had it before? Are you saying antique, like old? Yeah. Thai hmm. antique. No. It's it's in Karina Heights on your way to Carindale and it's like really authentic, delicious Thai. There's lots of good Thai in this area. There is. We're very lucky. We had red curry duck, which is my favourite all time. And it had light cheese in it, which Yum. is just, yeah. Epic. Oh my God, Sarah would love that. She loves duck and she loves light cheese. Yeah. I need to tell her about that. I will. I'll tell her. Mons Thai also do a good red duck with light cheese. I have had Mons Thai with Sarah and Charlie before. Yeah. A we, little while ago. We get Thai like probably once a fortnight and we either go Mons or Thai antique. Thai is really good. Mm. Yum. Okay. So to start off the episode, what we're going to be talking about today is how the secret to success is in our daily habits. And I just want to remind everybody about goals versus outcomes. I have touched on this before, but just as a refresher and the easiest one to talk about is weight loss. So if you have a goal to lose five kilos, you don't just wake up tomorrow and go, okay, I'm going to lose five kilos. And that's 
going to just happen. Yeah. What you need to do is think about what you can control and that's the little daily goals and the daily habits that accumulate to that effort. So if your goal is to lose five kilos, when we take that back to a day-to-day basis, that looks like eating so that you're in a calorie deficit that looks like moving might be hitting a step goal. It might be drinking water and it might be getting enough sleep. Those are the daily habits that you do have control over in order to get you to that outcome of losing the five kilos. So instead of thinking, I've got to lose five kilos and hyper fixating on that outcome, what we need to do is control what we can control. And that is our daily habits. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I really like the building the wall analogy, and I don't think that I've talked about that before, but I think what's important to remember with daily habits is people will get on a streak and they'll do a really good streak of habits and then they'll lose a few days and then they'll just throw in the towel. Yeah. And when we think about it with building the wall, we're building this wall brick by brick by brick by brick, and then we have four days off building the wall. Yeah. Does the wall fall down? No. Is the wall gone? No. No, we just pick up where we were and we keep building the wall. So that's the way we need to think about it. People think that it's game over when they've missed a few days. But the thing about daily habits is making sure that we get consistent over time. And that's not going to look perfect straight away. It does take practice to really cement habits. Yeah. Um, And that's what we're going to be talking about. So I think the first point that I want to make is stop focusing on what you can't do and start cementing what you can do. And people get so caught up on focusing on what they can't do. Like I don't have time to train five times a week. Yeah. Well, you've got time to train two days a week, train two days a week. Yeah. So I was actually speaking to a client this week and she was saying, oh, I'm really beating myself up because I didn't have time to go to the gym this day, this day and this day because I worked late. And I was like, why are you even worrying about that? Like stop focusing on what you can't do and focus on what you can do. And you've just said that you have time to to meal prep and shop and that's not happening. So spending all this time beating yourself up for training that you couldn't do anyway, instead of focusing on what you can do. So letting go of what you can't achieve and focusing on what's already good and making it even better. Yeah. I think that that's one of the things that I was struggling with the most was like, I had this idea in my head that like I had to commit to set times and set days. And I was like, well, I don't have time to make this happen. And Kev works in the mornings, blah, blah, blah. But then when you made that training program for me to work towards a triathlon and you were like, how many days could you commit to? And I was like, I could probably do two training sessions. Yeah. And then that's what I started off with. Yep. And then now I'm doing five. Yes. And the thing is, once you've seen that you can make space for two sessions, then you can see your capacity to make space for five sessions. Yeah. So at first, and remember, we talked about that thing, that time, like say, try replacing, I don't have time with like, it's not a priority. Yes. And then see how um, your opinions change. And what you're saying, I think is really important to remember too, is to not compare your journey to anyone else's. Yeah. Like we think, oh, so-and-so is going to the gym and they're training six days a week and I need to do that. But if you only have the capacity for two or you only have the capacity for three, doing three is better than doing none because you can't do six. Yes. That's exactly where I was at. And it is like what you were saying before about having that big goal and then breaking it down and working backwards. That's exactly what we've done, what you've helped me with is just starting with those two sessions a week. And in the beginning, I was like, there is no way. I don't know why I've committed to this. There's no way I can do this. But then I started, you know, I was obviously really hard at first, but now I'm at to the point where I'm like, okay, I feel confident that I have the fitness there to at least get through it. Do you know what I mean? And I think a part of that, and I've got notes on this later in the session, so we will be touching on this, is identity and the ideas and the mindsets that we have. Yeah. And we're going to come back to that. Oh, I'm excited to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I really like that part. Um, But what I just touched on before is people think that the answer is sheer discipline. And I see this all the time with my clients. They're like, I just need to train in the afternoons. I just need to start cooking dinner. I just need to be more disciplined with this. I just need to have the willpower to do this. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now that sheer discipline is not the fucking answer. Yeah, yeah. Because we're all human, right? And we all have like a limited amount of willpower or decision capacity 
over the course of the day. So if we think about our decision making or our willpower as like a battery pack in a computer game, yeah. as we go through the day, it starts to wear down. It starts to wear down and we make more decisions. We've got screaming kids, we've got big decisions at work and our willpower is just wearing down and down and down. Yeah. So then we get to the evening and we've got all these good intentions. I'm going to cook this amazing healthy dinner. Yeah. And we get there and we're like, fuck, I, I can't. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah, yeah. And that's normal. Yeah. That doesn't make you like a less disciplined person. Yeah. It just makes you human. Yeah. I love that. So what I want to drill into today is talking about your habits and making them work for you. And I always tell my clients, we just have to hack the system and find ways that work for you. The people that are really, really successful in their fitness journey, in their health journey, they don't have amazing willpower or amazing discipline. They might have that, but odds are they have great habits. Yeah. And they have set their environment up to succeed. Yeah. And that's all it is. And anybody can do this. Yeah. So the thing about habits is it's a compounding effect. It's not about doing something once. It's about repeating it time and time and time again. And it's that compounding effect that adds up to that big outcome. So I think we need to think about habits as something that we need to do for the long term and go back to that enjoying the journey. Like we want these habits to be something that we can put in place to do forever, essentially. Like remember with the fitness journey, we're never going to clock it. You don't get fit and then stop. Yeah, Like it's about finding a way that you can make it work with your life, that you can enjoy it and that you can do it long term. So that's where habits come in. Habits are something that fits into your lifestyle that gives you the result you want with that compounding effect over time. And what we're looking for is consistency, over perfection. You can do something perfectly for a month. Yep. We'll get a great outcome. But when that perfection fades, we're right back to where we started versus if we do something at say 70% capacity for the rest of our life, we're going to get a lot better of a result than being perfect for a month. So I'm loving all of this so far because I've always been really hard on myself for being someone with no discipline. Like just in general, like I've always felt like that was a real character flaw of mine that I was just like, I'm not born with that discipline that everyone else has. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people feel like that. Yeah, I think it's something people really beat themselves up over. But I can just see everything that you're saying making so much sense now and like enjoying the habits because, yeah, now I'm looking forward not to keep bringing it back to the training and the triathlon and everything. But now I get so excited to like go for a swim and, you know, go to the gym with my friend and all of those things. It's just becoming like a part of my life and what I'm doing. And the reason that is, is because like discipline is not something that we're born with. We build it over time. It's like a muscle that we exercise. And when we do the things that we say we're going to do, we build discipline and it gets easy. We build routine. So what you're saying is that you got into the habit of going to the gym and now you enjoy it. Yeah. So did you just become disciplined all of a sudden or did you build (laughs) a habit? Yes, I built a habit. I definitely didn't just become disciplined. <laughs> you just don't wake up and go, I'm going to be disciplined I'm a different now. Person. Yeah. <laughs> and I think people would think that I'm an incredibly disciplined person. I've always person. thought you were a very disciplined person. And I am. Yeah. But that's just because I've built these habits up over years and years and years and years. Like yeah. if you had have known me in my early twenties, I had fuck all routine. Like we've spoken about yeah, it on yeah, the yeah. alcohol episode. Yeah. So one of the things talking about discipline with eating, Mm. so I cannot have any sweets in my house or I have to have exact portions. Even then, I mean, we've spoken about my little moons before, but if they are in the house, I'll smash the whole box and just with anything, like if we have any, thank God I'm allergic to most things because if we have anything, like it won't last a day. I just, because I don't have any discipline, you know, with that. So is there a way that I can change this through my habits as well. So I just want to refer you back to the episode that we did with Emma a little while ago on non-hungry eating. 
and just refresh everybody on the forbidden fruit theory and like permission being the antidote. Yeah. So sometimes when we ban ourselves from having certain foods and like you were saying, we you keep it outside of the house, which in a way is kind of like saying, I can't have this in the house. I'm banning myself. Yeah. What we do is we create that forbidden fruit theory and we think, oh, all I want is that thing. Yeah. So when we inevitably get it in the house, we binge on it or when yeah. we get access to it. And sometimes giving ourselves permission to have the food is the antidote to that behavior. Yeah. So say you were to keep little moons in the house all the time, you would probably overeat on them yeah. for a while. Yeah. And then you would be like, oh, they're always here. Yeah. The novelty is worn off. Yeah. So true. But it is like, it does take time to get there. Yeah. And I think that it's important to remember if you are engaging in those non-hungry eating behaviors because you are stress eating, boredom eating, association eating, yeah. go back to that episode with M and look at addressing the root cause. But I think what's more likely happening with you is that you have this idea that you can't have them. Yeah. So when they are in the house, you binge. Whereas if you keep them around, you will probably binge for a little while, yeah. but then the novelty will wear off. That's so true. Obviously I took so much from that M episode, but I didn't think of me having it not in the house was me limiting myself, but that's so true. Yeah. That's that is why definitely when, me banning myself. <laughs> and that's why when people don't keep chocolate in the house at all, when it is in the house, they'll binge. Yeah. Yes. Which is a really hard behavior to break and it does take a lot of perseverance and there are strategies that we go into with eating and making sure protein intake is high so that we're not snacky. Because also remember that these foods that we're talking about, they are engineered to be Moorish. Mm, yeah. The people that make them want them to be low satiety. So they don't want it to fill us up. Yeah. They want us to be able to eat as much of it as physically possible <laughs> because they don't give a fuck about our health. Yeah. They want to make money. Yes. So again, you're not necessarily a person with terrible discipline. Yeah. You're human. Yeah. And you have like these massive corporations <laughs> working against this you. Is so true. And like the labels and the colors. And, and the thing is as well, like you get this into your head that you're like, okay, I don't have any discipline. I did this. I feel guilty. I feel shit about myself. I'm going to repeat the cycle. Yes. Yeah. I need chocolate to make me feel better. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um, so I think with sweet food, it is important to remember that. And it is probably a good idea to look into the root causes. And if binge eating is happening because of other issues, it's probably not the behavior of the eating that you need to deal with. It's about the reason that you are leading into those behaviors and working with a psych on that can be really, really helpful. But I want to um, just go back to that point that I was saying before about the people that you do look up to with their willpower is that they don't necessarily have better willpower than you. They've just set their environment up for success. So that may look like not having lots of tempting food around, but it is important to learn to moderate it. So yeah. just not having the food around is a short-term solution. We're not learning to moderate it. Yeah. Going to that same idea about discipline when we're talking about health and fitness as a whole, let's talk about what setting yourself up for success might look like outside of removing that food because we do really want to be able to have foods yeah. like that in the house and have access to them. But if we're thinking about discipline with training, with good quality nutrition, with sleep, with all of the other things that build you up to be a healthy person, setting yourself up for success might look like starting your morning routine the night before. Yeah. So if you're someone who likes to snooze your alarm or doesn't often get to the gym or you're late or you miss it, that might look like getting your clothes out the night before. Yeah. Putting your alarm clock over the other side of the room so that you have to physically get out of bed. All these little steps and all these little habits that you can put in place to hack the system and to work around the way that you work to get yeah. you there. Yeah. It's not a it's not a matter of going, okay, I just need to be a morning person. I'm just gonna start yeah. getting up at five o'clock. I'm gonna grab my clothes. I'm just gonna do that. It's gonna be like, okay, no, I know I have a really big resistance to getting out of bed. I'm gonna put my alarm clock on the other side of the room so I physically have to get out That's of bed clever. to turn it off. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure that my clothes are right next to my alarm clock. So all I have to do is put them on and get out the door. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure that I do all these little things the night before because I know I'm not great in the mornings. Yeah. But let's hack the system. Yeah. 
Other things could be reducing resistance by turning over the big rocks first. So what I mean by this, if there is something in your day that is important to your health and fitness journey, maybe it is going to the gym, maybe it is cooking dinner. Yeah. It's something that you always put off. And if you put it off to the end of the day, yeah. it's not going to happen. Yeah. Because that's going back to that willpower battery pack. The more we push things back, the less likely they are to happen. That's yeah. why people don't often overeat at breakfast. Yes. They overeat no. in the evening when their willpower is really low. So what we need to do is reduce that resistance by turning over the big rocks first and getting those things that we have the most resistance to done really early in the day. Yeah. So if you're someone who always flags your gym session in the afternoon, you need to start training in the morning. Yeah. If you're someone who can't cook a meal at nighttime because you're tired from work, you need to meal prep. That's me. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and yeah. that's so normal. Like yeah. if you ask me to go into the shops at 6 p.m. tonight yeah. and buy and organize a meal, I can't do it. No, it's so hard. This literally happened last night. I will wander around the shops. Just yeah. like my brain will be like a blank potato. I know. Kev was like, what do you want for dinner? And I was like, I can't. I got nothing. And in the end, Oscar had to <laughs> decide for us because we were both like Oscar's like for fuck's sake guys make a decision <laughs> he was like just get some bok choy and chicken and we'll have teriyaki chicken oh my god that's so good we, need, like, okay. we need that personality <laughs> right I know I was very impressed Magnolia's like Mackey's <laughs> yeah that's yeah that's where most people's brain goes yeah. because they just don't have the capacity and it's not because they have shitty willpower it's because they have a hard day and they've got busy lives yeah and that's the easiest option so options could be meal prep yeah. or meal plan yeah. so you at least have the food in the fridge and you have the plan of what you need to make and then you just go into the kitchen and you cook it but if yeah. you physically still can't cook it like if you come home from work and you are tanked you need to meal prep or you need to get a meal delivery service like yeah. it's not about having better willpower it's about hacking the system that's so true so it could look like hello fresh or you foods yeah. or those delicious ones that you eat food for fitness my yeah. fave yeah fave. i need to get back into those they're good the other thing is outsourcing tasks that you don't like or you don't have time for and this one is potentially dependent on your situation. It might be something that most people can't afford, but say you are never getting your bathrooms cleaned or you're, and, and, and that's taking up time from your health and fitness habits or, you know, you, what's another example? Um, I can't think. <laughs> mowing <laughs> yeah mowing. mowing a lot yeah so these things that you have resistance to they're taking away from time that you could be focusing on your health and fitness so if you're saying like oh I would love to go to the gym but I have to clean the bathrooms yes. but you have the capacity to pay someone to clean your bathrooms yeah pay someone to clean your bathrooms and spend that time on your health and fitness yeah or well, the same if you're like in a position where you could be you know mowing your lawn or you could be doing an hour's work yeah if you're earning more money doing that hour's work, pay someone to mow the lawn. Like take yeah. extra resistance out of your life, outsource it. If you've got kids, delegate it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just thinking, when will Oscar be old enough to mow the <laughs> to lawn? Mow the lawn. <laughs> Other ways you can set your environment up for success is things like not having tempting foods out in a place that you will see them. And a good yeah. example of this is if we put a plate of cookies on this table yeah. and it's a really busy area, lots of people are going past, people are going to eat the cookies. They're yeah. there. If we put a plate of apples there, people are going to eat the apples. They're there. That could even look like if you're not eating fruit because it's in the veggie crisper and it's right at the back and you can't see it all the time. Yeah. But try putting it on the bench and yeah. seeing if you eat more fruit because it's in your immediate environment. Yeah. The same with like not having, you know, foods that you find really tempting. Like don't have a lolly jar on your That's desk That's what I was going to say, yeah. Oh, God. I had one of those when I worked in admin and I just would eat it all day and then have to replenish it and then eat it all day. Yeah. And then you think, oh, fuck. Especially when you're just bored. Need to it's have just better mindless. willpower. Yeah. You're just like, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> So the other thing we're saying, like remove temptations, we were saying maybe that's not the best solution, but it might be like an out of sight, out of mind thing or plan for them to remove guilt. So yeah. another thing I was saying to one of my clients was if you guys are having takeaway on the weekends and, you know, you're feeling like you're doing things on the fly and it's not aligning with your goals, 
plan to have takeaway on the weekends, but think, okay, I'm going to have grilled on Saturday and this is what my other meals are going to look like, or we're going to get Thai on this day, but I'm going to make sure that I have lunch and lunch and breakfast available. So yeah. we can have all of these things, but if we're, if we're working on the flight, it doesn't really align with our goals, then we feel really guilty. However, we can plan for easier solutions like takeaway and make it fit in and remove all of the guilt. Yeah. And the last one I have for setting an environment up for success with your habits is work with those around you. So start to tell people what you're trying to achieve yes. um, so that they can work in with you. Because if your partner is always coming home and saying like, oh, let's watch Netflix, like let's not go to the gym, yeah. then you're going to go with the flow with that. But if you really want them to be supportive, try and get them on board and let them know about your goals so they can be like, oh, do you think we should go for a walk together so that you can be on the same page? Yeah. And I think you've mentioned like getting an accountability buddy before as well. Yeah, definitely. Which that's definitely helped me. Like having my mum obviously doing the triathlon with me and then like having my friend that I go to the gym with because then even if you don't feel like it, you've got that other person being like, hey, do you want to do this? And then it's you very, don't want to let them down. Yeah, it's very easy to let yourself down. You've very got, easy. Yeah, very, and then very kick easy. yourself about it all night and then – Eat yeah, chocolate to feel better. It's a and vicious cycle. The, it's the vicious cycle. And the same thing with like getting an accountability buddy is it's just taking away some of the fear yeah. to start with. A hundred percent. Like I was saying to you, uh, we're, we're doing confidence this year. We're yeah. doing things we want to do, getting out of our comfort zones. I really want to learn to surf. Yes. I've been talking about this for a while. Yep. I'm terrified. <laughs> it is the first time I have done something that I have absolutely no clue how to do. And I'm yeah so scared of looking like a fool. <laughs> I was too scared to even go to the surfboard shop on my own. Yeah. That's so, how I felt getting my bike. <laughs> so t- my new friend, Taylor, yeah. uh, came with me so I could yeah. buy my surfboard and, and she's coming with me to a lesson on Yay. Monday. So, and, and like, even when we were in the shop, the guy was so nice. He's the guy that's doing our lesson. I was like, why was I so frightened of this? Yeah. Well, that's what we were just saying. I've been going to the gym with like Maria and with my mum and I um, went to the gym for the first time by myself on Monday since I was 19 years old and I was so proud of myself and when I did it I was like this is fine and so easy and kind of fun I was listening to my podcast and they also play really good music there and I was alone for an hour yeah and the kids were nice. there it was so nice and I just left being like also very proud of myself because I feel like that's like what I've been working towards having the confidence to do that and the fitness to do that and I didn't fall off the treadmill which is like my biggest fear that's good that's good (laughs) start start. but do you know what they were playing I don't know one of those news shows and as I was on the treadmill they played a clip of this woman falling off the treadmill and her pants get stuck and she comes up and she's like half nude and I was like this I don't is the this worst right now. timing but then I realized there's a thing you can hold on to so I just held on to that for dear life like, and there's while a safety I was used thing I saw that but I didn't want to have to use that can it you just imagine? stops it it doesn't like it like alarms don't start yeah. it just stops the treadmill <laughs> <laughs> imagine if it's like boom 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 Someone safety <laughs> are you okay <laughs> I just imagine me holding on for a dear life while I'm like flying off it <laughs> my next issue Uh, (laughs) how much time do we have one of many (laughs) where should we start Um, so I find it really hard to focus on goals and I leave everything to the last minute is there any advice you have on how I can change this yes I have lots of advice okay so first and foremost I want to remind you that there's freedom in planning people who leave things to the last minute I find they think, oh, well, I just have, I have the hope that I'll have more freedom because I'm not worried about this thing that I have to do. And I'm, you know, using all my time the way that I want to use my time. However, you actually end up decreasing your mental capacity, decision-making guilt, (laughs) feelings of failure. So if you set up reasonable expectations around when you're going to get things done, there's actually freedom because you're freeing up all those things. Like you don't have to be doing something and think, fuck, I really should be doing that. Yeah, feeling guilty. (laughs) Feeling guilty, (laughs) feeling like you're thinking about it all the time. If you really delegate the time to set tasks, then you can be more present in the other things that you want to do. You can look at what's left in your calendar. Like it's not that sort of frantic energy. Yeah. However, I really want to talk to 
like you having that as your identity. And I think a lot of people would relate to this and I see it all the time, but you say like, I'm a last minute person or people say I'm not organized or this is just the way I am. I always do things like this. And what we believe we constantly hear. So as long as we keep that dialogue of I'm a last minute person, you're going to be a last minute person. You're going to do the behaviors that align with that identity. Yeah. And I think people get really, really stuck on changing their identity. And I'd love to do even a whole episode on this because we get stuck in with like, I am this, I am this career. I am this sort of a person. Yeah. And I have this belief that we can be, anybody that we want to be. So I think the first thing would be to start to change the language around that. Yeah. And then not say like, I always leave things to the last minute. Like you even acknowledge changing, like in the past, I have left things to the last minute, but I'm going to try and change that behavior. So start identifying as the person that you want to be. Yeah. And this is a really, this is really good advice for goals in general. Think about who you want to be. And if we're thinking about like our health and fitness journey, Think about this person that is like our ideal version of ourselves, our fittest, healthiest version, and then sit down and write down like what are their habits? Yeah. What time do they wake up in the morning? When do they go to the gym? How do they, you know, yeah. organize their goals? Do yeah. they leave things to the last minute or do they set aside time to do things at the time that that's going to be more efficient? And then go, oh, okay. Well, to become this person, I have to adopt their habits. Yeah. So obviously you're not going to do that all at once, but say your ideal version, let's say Alex, the triathlete. Yeah. Alex, the triathlete, she's about to do her first Olympic distance (laughs) triathlon. Yeah. Alex, the triathlete gets up at 5 a.m. to train every morning. Yeah. That's what she does. So now Alex, current Alex, could get up at 5 a.m. two days a week and train. Yeah. And then build on that. Yeah. So we don't just become this person that we want to be. We start to adopt their habits. That needs to start with identifying as that person. I am Alex. I am a triathlete. And I think we have so much resistance. Like we we want to be really modest. Yeah. Like we always want to say, like I would say for years and years, I'm not a runner. Yeah. People will be like, you've run fucking three marathons. I think you're a runner. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not a runner. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm yeah. not a serious runner. Yeah. If you run, you're a fucking runner. <laughs> like, and we need to be like, we need to believe that we are this thing. And and then whatever we believe, our habits are going to start to align with that. If you believe that you're someone that sleeps in every morning, you can sleep in every morning. Like, that's yeah. what you believe. That's how you identify. I'm a sleepy person. The one I see all the time is people saying, I'm unorganized. Yeah. I'm just unorganized. That's how I am. I can't organize myself. Yeah. And all of these things, we're not saying I'm a dog. Yeah. You can't change that. (laughs) But like you can change whether you're organized or not. Yeah. yeah. You can change whether you leave things to the last minute or not. And will you get it right every single time? No. Yeah. But we want to build that consistency over time. So if, if leaving things to the last minute is something that you're struggling with, then the first step would be trying to allocate time to those tasks that's not last minute yeah and and just working on that and you're going to get that positive reinforcement of being like holy shit I did that like way before the deadline yeah and I'll think I'll liken it back to like when I didn't have a lot of money I would always pay my bills the day that they were due yeah and then as my financial situation improved I was like I'm going to pay my bills a little bit beforehand yeah now I pay my bills on the day they come yeah And that feels awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I get that positive reinforcement that I'm someone that pays bills when they come in. Yeah. And then my behaviors align with that. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I am. It's actually so funny because I was thinking about this and I was saying to Kev the other day, I feel like my identity for so long has been I'm sick, which obviously wasn't something that like I could change immediately. But then part of that became I'm just someone who stays up all night watching TV and I'm just someone who's, you know, not going to work out. Like that's just not the person that I am. And then now slowly I've been able to change. Obviously I'm feeling a lot better and I feel like that whole part of me is changing to whereas at night now from working out I've been too tired to stay up all night and watch TV or I've been using that time to research or even like go for a run and stuff like that. And now I feel like I'm changing to 
be someone that's more like, oh no, I am someone who's fit and like I'm someone who goes to the gym and it's so, so rewarding. Mindset is so powerful. And like we're saying that there are things that are outside of our control, but we do fall into these identity traps and get really hung up on these identities. Yeah. And then, you know, we are, like you said, you're leaning into these behaviors of like, yes, you were sick. Yeah. You are sick, but you're not. Well, you, well, you are, Yeah. but you've gone, okay, well, I'm sick and I can't train, so I'm staying up late. Yeah. And then that's adding on to that compounding effect. Yeah. Whereas you had like a little bit of an experience of feeling better and then you've changed your mindset and your identity and then all of your behaviours have started to change as well. Yeah. And like a big portion of that is the change in medication. Yeah. But the mindset and those behaviours is all going to be feeding into you feeling really good as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so fucking powerful. I know. I feel the best that I've felt. Such a pivot. You're a different like person. Years. I am, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Makes me so happy. Yeah. It's good. You're a different person. And I think like those mindset shifts are so powerful. And this is like a little bit of a, a pivot from the habits thing, but it still relates it's still back. related. Uh, we were talking about in our younger self episode, I believed that life was happening to me and that I was really hard done by. And that was my reality. Yeah. Whereas if I start to believe that life works out for me, that becomes my reality. And if you think about that with your habits as well, all of these things that you want to achieve, if you start to believe that you are capable your behaviours are going to follow that belief. Yeah. In the past, you've given me some amazing tips and now I am someone who's working out five times a week. Uh, So one of the things that you helped me with was, as I said before, just letting go of how rigid I was about working out at set times during the week. And as I said, I had trouble because I was so fixated on this idea about the routine. And I was like, oh, you know, my friends get up at 4am and they go to the gym then, but I can't because Kev works in the mornings and I can't just like leave my kids. And that's what was like stopping me, that whole mindset of like, I can't do this because I don't have that time. But can you explain that to our listeners? So I think it's going back a little bit to what we were saying at the very start about focusing on what you can't do And instead we need to focus on what we can do. And sometimes that can be a little bit of an excuse that we use. I think this is going to depend on the individual for yourself, particularly like you do have more movement in your schedule to be able to train on the days that Kev has off at different times on the weekends. So you do need to be flexible with it. And anybody that has children probably needs to be pretty flexible because there's like a lot of spanners that get chucked in the works. And if you say, okay, well, I can only go to the gym at 5 a.m. And if you're going to be really rigid with that and the option is that, you know, the kids get sick and you don't get there, whereas you probably could tweak a few things and get to like an afternoon session or train a little bit on the weekend, work in with your husband. You need to have that flexibility because at the end of the day, getting the task done is better than not doing it at all. Like what is the difference if you don't do it at this time? Gym doesn't need to be a 5 a.m routine for everybody. Yeah. However, it is important to note that time has memory and location has energy. Yeah. So I got this from Jay Shetty. If you are really interested in like overall wellness, I really loved Think Like a Monk. And it's such a really unique book because he has like gone and lived with the monks and it's everything that he learned from them, but then how he applies it to the real world. Yeah, cool. It's really, really cool. But If we do something at the same time every day and at the same place every day, it becomes easier and more natural. And like the example is, say you want to cement a meditation habit. If you meditate in that corner of the room, that's the energy. That's the space that you meditate and that becomes the energy of that space. If you, you know, get up every day at the same time and go for your walk, that becomes routine. And for some people that can be really, really good. But again, it's going to depend on the individual. If you're someone whose schedule is a little bit outside of your control because of work, kids, whatever that can be, you need to be more flexible. But if you're someone who has the ability to be more rigid, you might find that that's helpful in cementing those routines, especially if you're thinking about something like meditation is a perfect example because 
People often think I don't have time for meditation. Yeah. I don't have five minutes for meditation. I'm so fucking busy. But if you make five minutes every morning, like it's five minutes, we scroll on our phone. Yeah. The clarity and productivity that you're going to get from that five minute meditation is going to free up so much time in your day. So it's so funny. We say we don't have time for this thing where it's going to give us way more time down the track. Yeah. On the locations having energy, we want to make sure that the energy of the space is suited to the goal that we're trying to achieve. And this can be really helpful for habits. So for example, if you're focusing on a bedtime routine, you really need to be protective of the energy around your bedroom. If you're really focused on trying to get more sleep, you need to stop eating or watching TV in your bedroom and make that space be for sleeping. Yeah. And that can be really important. So I think, again, we're going back to not comparing to how it looks for somebody else. Yeah. For somebody like myself, single, flexible working schedule that I set myself, don't have to work around anyone else. Yeah. Realistically, going to the gym at 5 a.m. every single day, that's a possibility for me and that might help me cement my routine. Yeah. That's not how I do things. I'm very, very flexible with the times that I, you know, do things because that works for me. But for yourself, with someone that has kids and has Kev to work around and has a job that requires things at different times and it's not as um, fixed as other people, it's good to have that flexibility. And we have to always remember, and I say this all the time to my clients, done is better than perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Good enough is sometimes good enough. Yes. Someone else said that to me during the week as well. I was really struggling with my website for like, I want to say weeks, but I feel like it's been a bit longer than that because I'm like, I'll do a website and then I'm like, this is crap. I don't like it. And then I start again and then I do it. And then a week later I look and I'm like, no. Nah. And my friend, we were walking to school actually. And she said to me, Alex, you just have to accept good is good enough mm. and do what's good and upload that and you can change it whenever you want, but good is good enough. And that's really helpful for people that are perfectionists. Yes. <laughs> and like, because remember, perfectionism is a form of self-sabotage. Yeah. And if you're like, oh yeah, but I'm a perfectionist, it's not really a good personality trait to have, especially if you're someone that's putting things off because it's not perfect. If you're a perfectionist, all of my perfectionist clients have those two catchphrases, good is good enough and done is better than perfect. Yeah. I, that's actually something that I've been like trying to use a lot lately. Like I did a really shit swim the other day and I was like really hard on myself at the time. And I'm like, should I get back in the pool and stay? I'm like, no, no, this is good. I'm here and I've done more than I would have done a year ago. Yeah. This is good. It's yeah. yeah. It's so easy to be critical to and always think that we need to be doing more and more and more and everything that needs to be perfect. But the only bad workout is the one that you didn't do. Yep. And not every day is going to feel amazing. Showing up is better than doing nothing at all. Yeah. And like on that as well, and I'm, I'm trying to work out how, my head around how to say, like explain this. So like, you know how you're talking about how we're all very modest in saying, you know, I'm a runner or I'm a triathlete. triathlete. I think that all comes down to as well fear of failure because mm. by putting that out into the world, you've got further to fall. 100%. So if I put myself out there and I say, I'm a triathlete and then I don't become a triathlete, then I feel like that's that's a big way to fall. And I think that that plays into like we were talking about confidence as well. Yeah. We aren't confident because we live in Australia. We don't want to be too modest. Like I put Tall a, poppy syndrome. Tall poppy syndrome is a big thing in Australia. Yeah. I put a post up this morning on my Instagram about hybrid athletes. Yeah. And the idea around a hybrid athlete is someone that does multi forms of training yeah. simultaneously. So I weight train and I run. Yeah. And even for myself who has been running for five years, I run marathons every year. I weight train to a high standard. I'm quite strong. I was like, can I call myself an athlete? Yes, you can. On the internet. I'm a sponsored athlete with a sub company, but even I was like, I don't think I can say I'm an athlete on the yeah. internet. Yes, you can. I noticed you actually put it in inverted commas. I did too, see? which you shouldn't. I was like, you are an that athlete. That was around the more like the hybrid yeah. athlete because yes. I just I just ran and I did weights. Yeah. I didn't give it a name. Yeah. But now I'm a hybrid athlete. Yeah, I love it. Mm. Claim it. Mm. See that. So on what you were just saying, how can I get better at cementing the habits that will get me to my goals? Yep. Cool. So this is the tangible shit. (laughs) Did you like that? Yeah, I like that. (laughs) So the best advice I would 
give you is to track your habits yeah. and track your habit streaks in a way that appeals to you. This is going to be different for everybody. Some people like to mark it on a calendar. Some people like to use journals that have little habit streaks. They might like to make a book with a little graph that they can count off. Yeah. They might like to use an app. There's heaps of really good habit tracking apps out there. Basically we're looking for a sticker chart for adults Yeah, <laughs> and it works. Yeah. So even if you were just using a calendar, just marking off every day that you achieved said habit. Yeah. When you see that, you feel that sense of accomplishment and it's going to keep you going. Yeah. Tracking habits and tracking your habit streaks is really, really beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. I've been using a few apps. I've been using like Strava and whatever that Garmin app is and you get those little rewards, like oh, the yeah. little like metal things like, oh, <laughs> we're not, we're not friends on Strava. I only just, I don't even know how to use it. I only just Strava is the it. elite social media app, in my opinion. Yeah, Fraz got me onto it, so I'll add you. Strava is very, very fun. But yeah, things like that are great. For myself, I like physical things. Like yeah. I like to see it on a piece you of like paper. You like your gold stars. Yeah. yeah. So I would be more inclined to do a gold star than like logging into an app. The app that I use with my clients has the ability to track habits in there. So they tick it off and it'll be like, you're on a 17 day streak. Like things like that are great Yeah. to keep you going. Remember that consistency creates results. If you're half-assed, you're going to get a half-assed result. If you yeah. do things every third day, you're going to get an every third result. So that consistency through tracking habit streaks is what's going to get you there. Yeah. Use timers and reminders, post-it notes, keep things front of mind. Yeah. So reminders and timers in your phone are great. Yeah. If you want to do something at a set time every day, set an alarm. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Such an easy solution. Yeah. So many people don't use it. If you want to remember to take your vitamins. Yes. Put your vitamins on the bench instead of in the cupboard. Put your vitamins next to your toothbrush where you brush your teeth every night. Yeah. Put them somewhere you're going to see it. If you're trying to remember to start a new habit and it's out of sight or out of mind, you're not going to be great at it. Put it yeah. somewhere you can see it. And I love clear space. Yeah. I like things to be behind cupboards. I like things to look clean and tidy. Yeah. But that's huge. Yeah. That's such a huge one. Yeah. I keep my new medication next to my coffee machine because I'm never going to forget to have my coffee in the morning. <laughs> and that leads me to my next one, habit stacking. Yeah. So if you're trying to cement a new habit, stack it on top of a habit that's already existing. Ah, clever. So if you have a coffee every morning and you need to have medication first thing, put it with the coffee. Yeah. If you need to take a tablet every night and you already brush your teeth, I would hope for most people, put it next to your toothbrush. Yeah. So stack it onto a habit that's already well and truly ingrained. Yeah. If you need to do something on your way out the door, put it with your car keys. Yeah. Stack it onto something that you're already doing. Habit I do stacking that with is my, so powerful. Yeah. I do that. I do everything I have to remember with my car keys. Oh, me too. I put my car keys in the fridge sometimes if I need to remember to take food somewhere. Clever. I'm like, I library bags, we're bloody hopeless with the kids' library bags. So now I'm like, you put your library bag under my keys. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise we're walking out the door without it. This is what we're talking about. This is, it's not about just being a better yeah. or more disciplined being, being someone person. with a better memory. <laughs> Habits is like hacking the system. Yeah. Finding ways to make the things that you want to achieve fit in with the lifestyle that you already have. Yeah. And starting small. Yeah. Another thing could be like putting notes. Like yeah. For some of my clients and I ask them to weigh in every morning and they think, I can't remember to jump on the scales. Yeah. Put a note on the mirror. Simple things like this. Yeah. Are such easy ways to get things done. Yeah. But we just think, oh no, I can just remember. We can't just remember. We're not good at remembering. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. I always see something and I'm like, I'll remember this. This is really like a song on the radio. And I'm like, that's a really catchy title. There's no way I'm going to forget that. And then I get home like an hour later. I'm like, ah. Oh. I would say that this is my best tip for my whole life's organization. Yeah. I assume I remember nothing. Yeah. That's clever. So if it's not written down, I'm not going to remember. And that's yeah. just the assumption that I make now. I text myself multiple times per day. Yeah. I'll be in the car and I'll say, hey, Siri, <laughs> text Tegan this. It's Tegan in my car. 
And I do that all the time yeah. because it's in my messages then. I know now that I can go and check in there and anything that I need to action for that day is done. And then I'll go and add it onto my to-do list for the day or I'll close the loops at the end of the night. Yeah, I assume I remember nothing because that is my reality. And I'm not just going to wake up one morning and decide that I'm going to have a better memory. (laughs) It's just not going to happen. That's really clever. I text Kev everything because he's got a terrible memory. So I'm always like texting him lists and blah, blah, blah. But when I get invited to something or there's a kid's birthday, I always am like, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. And I generally do, but I need to adopt that. Appointments, like when you're there and you're making an appointment, just everything. I just text myself everything because my phone is pretty much permanently attached to my right hand. Yeah. It's all in there. You, you could put it in notes, but the thing I like about text is I can just do it via voice. Yeah. Whatever I'm doing, it's just boom, send it straight off. Yeah. And I would say that that is my number one hack for being as organized as I am. That's a great tip. Assuming that I remember nothing. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't. Yeah, I love that. The last one. Don't throw in the towel, the towel if you miss a day. As we were saying, back to the wall analogy, if we've got this wall and we can't work on the wall for one or two days, the wall does not come down. Yeah. We just resume building. So don't throw in the towel if you miss a day, but try not to miss twice. Yeah. Because when we're getting in the habit of missing multiple days, it's really hard to build that habit. If we miss yesterday, we just let it go straight back into it tomorrow. Yeah. Really important. Yeah. Last question. Uh, How do I get my kids into good habits? for kids and I think it's really important for adults as well is just cement one habit at a time yeah if we go okay Alex the triathlete gets up at 5 a.m she drinks three liters of water a day she takes all of her supplements she has protein (laughs) after every meal and you wake up tomorrow and you go and do that yeah you're going to be probably a bit burnt out and it might be all a little bit too overwhelming however if you say okay I'm going to get up at said time until that becomes a habit. So say it takes you a month and then you're doing it, bring in the next thing. Yeah. And then make that a habit, bring in the next thing. Don't try and do a million things at once. And sometimes I even think that's a really good way for people to get into fitness and nutrition. Do the fitness component first. Yeah. Get your gym routine down pat. You're going to the gym every day. That's already happening. You don't need to think about it. That's on autopilot now okay, now let's work on your nutrition or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good tip, especially because once you're going to the gym, you're going to realize that you're so much more hungry and you're really depleted in some things. So, mm. Or yeah. like if you're not fueling appropriately, you're not going to feel like you're able to push hard in the gym and you're going to start to naturally want to crave those things. But if you, again, like if you wake up tomorrow and go, okay, I've gone from being a couch potato, a takeaway three, four, times a day, a week, yeah. whatever. And then I'm just going to wake up and I'm going to eat a salad and go to the gym every day. You might do that for a week yeah. and then you might go, oh, this is a bit too hard. But if you go, okay, first and foremost, I'm going to get to the gym three times per week. Okay. I've done that for a month. Now I'm going to make sure that I improve my breakfast. Yeah. Do that for a month. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to look at what I'm taking for lunch. Yeah. Build your habits up really, really slowly. Yeah. Perfect. All right. New segment. New segment. On the fly. We actually didn't prepare a segment, but Alex has a great idea. (laughs) Because I was just going to mention this to you, but then I realized that it really is in line with what we're discussing today. And I think that regardless of whether or not you're into sport, I think that there's a lot of things that people could take from this documentary anyway. By the way, guys, this segment is a recommendation segment. It is. Sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> we didn't say that. that. <laughs> Which might be a regular segment because I yeah, love a reco. Same. I love recommendations. It's how you find all the best things. So this is a Netflix series and it's called The Playbook, A Coach's Rules for Life. And it's just a really quick doco series. I smashed out the whole thing last night because there's only five episodes and they go for half an hour so oh yeah it's just like a movie it's just literally like a movie so it features doc rivers jill ellis (laughs) because you don't (laughs) so (laughs) doc rivers nba coach jill ellis one of the greatest coaches of all time coached the u.s women's soccer team okay like incredible. She's very inspirational. Jose Morchino, I think is how you say his name, soccer coach. Patrick, uh, Serena Williams coach. He's oh. incredible. Yeah. And then Dawn, Dawn Staley, is that how you say her name? Dawn Staley. She, I don't think that's right. 
Dawn Staley. I have no idea. I'm just <laughs> fucking like, how with do you. you know? I was, she's a college basketball coach. I was going to be so impressed if you knew who she was. So um, a bunch of coaches. A bunch of coaches. Summarize. They're all coaches. Very good coaches. High level. Yeah. Best coaches in the world. And they just talk about their approach to life. There's a lot of like mindset things in there. There's we love. Yeah. It's really good. And one of the things Jill Ellis says is that her approach to like coaching is stuff is it's like a Navy thing that when there's like a storm and clouds, you have this vision of what you're working towards. And even if you can't see it, like through the clouds, you can't see the stars or you can't see the sky, you know what you're working towards anyway. So as long as you like hold steady, it's hold steady, stay true. Okay. So as long as you like love- hold steady on what you want and stay true and then you'll get there. I love that. I'm yeah. re- I, I will watch this. Yes, I know. The whole time I was watching it, I was going to text you, but I knew you were in bed and I was going to be like, you have to watch this. Okay. My reco. Yes. Was actually going to be in the sign off anyway. Okay. Uh, if you really enjoyed this episode, we have talked about this before, but I would recommend you going to read or listen to the audiobook of Atomic Habits by James Clear. Yeah. It is absolutely fantastic, really easy listening, and it has so many fantastic tips about healthy habit creation. Yeah. If you are somebody who has struggled to achieve your fitness and health goals for a really long time, Odds are your daily habits is what you need to look at. And if you've enjoyed this episode, I would go and do further listening by hearing Atomic Habits or reading it. Yeah. Kev listened to that based on your recommendation and he loved it. Everybody, I haven't heard anybody be like, eh, it was okay. Like there's so many good tangible tips in there. Even if you're very like seasoned in your health and fitness journey, I got so much out of it when I read it. We love a tangible tip. We love a tangible (laughs) tip. It's like my favorite thing to say. (laughs) Here's the tangible shit. (laughs) So thanks everyone for tuning into this episode. If you learned something today, be sure to send it on to a friend. Uh, just side note, this has been like my favorite episode. So I think you say that every week. <laughs> no, I know, but I really love this. This is, I can't wait to listen to it again. I was listening to Alexis Fernandez. Alexis Fernandez. Oh, that do, do you, you fucking mind? mind? And every week she's like, I'm so excited for this episode. She's like, I say it every week, but I think yours is like, this is my favorite episode. I do. Which is good. I'm glad that we're churning out content that you, you love. <laughs> As I always say, I'm the target audience, but I am very much the target audience for this and I can see how it works. So yeah. Cool. (laughs) I'm glad. All right. Thanks guys. Thank you. Bye. I was going to say have a good night. (laughs) Have a good night. See you later. (laughs)